In this video, you'll see how pro book cover artist Christian Bentelang created this hyperdynamic superhero composite using DAD CG assets and Photoshop compositing. Be sure to stick with us to the end, guys, as Christian is a real meme machine and shares a ton of lighting techniques in this video. Let's roll the speed up. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean. I'm a pro digital artist from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. On this channel, we will take you beyond the Photoshop basics and into the world of advanced digital art. So for today's piece, we have a book cover by Christian Bentelan, cover artist extraordinaire from the Philippines. And he's creating an urban fantasy book cover. Uh, but when I saw the final image, I thought it had a real superhero vibe, hence the title of this video. So this book cover doesn't have a project yet. What Christian will be doing is posting this in one of his groups and putting it up as an auction. So whoever gets this cover up, I'll put their book title in the description below if you was interested in re reading an urban fantasy adventure book. Okay, so let's get into the artwork. Christian is working with the DAS interface here. I'm not a DAS user. I don't use any 3D or CG software because it scares me. But I get the idea, the overall basic premise. He's created a figure, picked a kind of preset pose from the left library. Don't know what any of this stuff does. Tweaks the lighting and got his figure together. Now, this is what I do understand, the Photoshop interface. He's laying down some rough tones with his Wacom into us. That little splodge in the middle, I assume, is a, a figure. And then we've got swirling elements going around it. So there's a very dynamic angle here and quite an interesting concept. The main character here has a bit of a telekinetic Jean Grey vibe. So that's pretty cool. That's that's why I really felt like this one had as much of a superhero theme as it did have urban fantasy. Some warp functions going on there. Um, and we've got the cobbled stone pavements. Now, before you might have missed it, you would have seen that Christian had a, a stock element, the floor, and it had the shutter stock watermark on it. What he was doing there was using the low resolution preview image to test to see if it's the right asset before spending a stock credit to download. So if you're a professional artist and you use premium stocks, you'd want to check whether it works with your overall composition before you spend any money pretty much. So that's an explanation there. You could see it was the right element that he needed. So he went onto the stock site and grabbed the full res as ever we always put the um the stock images in the description below so check those out if you want to use any of these assets so we've got the swirling frog fog going around the figure to the right i can see it's mainly layer masks that he's using and here we go we have some fog from the epic overlays bundle now, all of us on the team, we're professional digital artists and we struggle from time to time to get the overlay assets that we need for photo manipulation work like this. So we actually put together our own bundle. It's called the Epic Overlays Bundle. There's loads of stuff in there, water elements, fire elements, debris, dust. Uh, most popular is the fog and mist, which you can see in action here. So if you want a bundle of overlays for photo manipulation check out the link in the description we put a lot of work and effort into this asset collection right back onto the artwork we've got catch lights here on the edge of the figure so i'm assuming there's a light source to the left and christian is using clipping masks to limit those strokes to the pixel data below so those clipping masks to add a clipping mask alt and click between layers and i can see he's got a hue saturation adjustment layer so that is non-destructive he can go back and edit those values tweak those values anytime he wants without damaging or disrupting the original pixel data now this is where christian really excels he can take something very plastic and synthetic looking 
use his Wacom Inswas and, and do an overpainting process. So it has more of a stylized fine art look to it. I would like to know how to do this, but I really don't. He's had a, a, a good few years practice on creating this style and it's really effective. The Daz overpainting and photo stock combo. And one thing that amazes me always is just how fast he is. I, I, I can't get over how fast he does these. It's pretty wild. And there's me taking five days on an artwork. It's nuts. Learn from me, kids. Don't be a pencil specialist because you will be so slow. Okay, so uh, we've got tool presets. We've got brushes. He's using uh, a few wedge-shaped brushes. I'm not too sure if these are built-in presets or whether he's created them himself. Oh, that's interesting. He's got a bit of smudge action going on over the top to blend those. Ethereal kind of telekinetic vapor coming off the hand makes sense generating the chi power to create the vortex it's a really good pose actually it's a, a classic kind of action hero pose or should i say superhero pose but the dynamic angle makes it more interesting than if it was center and front facing so that's one of the benefits of using these cg assets is you can tweak the positioning of the figure to be exactly the way you want it get the lighting how you want it and then get the final posh polish with the photo stocks and the elements within the photoshop workspace so that's pretty cool okay some color processing here gradient map that's a favorite of mine i really like gradient map it gives uh, a unified kind of global tone to the whole thing a bit of levels action that's a favorite of mine as well levels is he what's going on there normal and then the brush setting if you look at the top he's using a flow of 60 so instead of using opacity to control the brush he's using the flow setting and that's something that i've started doing recently too so punching out those levels a bit with the layer mask and then we have a clipping layer there and then more catch lights on the edges so there must be multiple light sources here and some debris assets like i said before guys we've created a bundle that's got all of these debris dust bocky the whole shebang so be sure to check that out in the description because that's what keeps the light on here we don't make our money from youtube ads we make our money from stock assets Okay, so he's going a bit fancy there, adding a bit of color and processing to the kind of chi power energy. I believe that that rune thing was a brush, and that is a common trope in the urban fantasy genre in publishing. They, they really like those kind of mystical magic overlays. And it gives a sense of narrative and tells a story. I'm interested to see who w will get this book cover in the end and what kind of project it'll be useful if you watch this when it first came out there won't be anything in the description but after that check it out and see what book cover this was used for in the end okay so color dodge getting some vibrant tones some electric shocking blue into that vortex that's pretty nifty so he's got a soft light or overlay layer and the tones he's got so he's grabbing a selection of darks and lighter tones now that little um color wheel at the top right that's a coolerous uh color wheel and that is what christian uses all the time in his workflow for selecting colors in a fast manner on the fly now i'm old-fashioned i always just use a swatch at the left at the bottom of the tool panel but where Christian works so fast, he needs those colours accessible um, right there. And he doesn't have to mess about going into other options or dialogue boxes. I believe the total elapsed time for this artwork was two hours. So that's actually a bit longer than what Christian usually takes with his artwork. This is, um, this is a, a big piece for him. 
comparatively uh, to the other bits because because his workflow is just so ridiculously fast he's the definition of a speed artist 100 percent fact we have some small elements going on there lighting i like that that rear arm the way the the lighting is, is bouncing off the bottom because that rune element and the whirlpools would be emitting light upwards so it'd catch on the bottom side of the arm as you can see there the ethereal kind of glow magic vapor swells oh what's that demons okay i, I didn't even see that before oh that's quite subtle oh okay i see i see um what tool did he actually use did he use a smudge tool to manually blur that with the into us ah so it's a vortex of wraiths and spirits which is um yeah quite novel i really love the kind of motion blur and depth of field blur of the trash elements that are swirling around you can see he just duplicated that bit there that's pretty badass this is definitely the style of artwork that I'm not too hot at. I'm, I go more personally for photorealism, uh, portraits and character designs. So the lighting and the colour stuff is what I've always kind of struggled with. So that's a wrap for Christian Bentaland's urban fantasy superhero extravaganza. If you enjoyed this one, I'll put another one of Christian's speed arts up here. So take a look at that one. I appreciate you tuning in, guys. Catch you at the next one. See you then.